So crazy because people, I mean, it takes months and years to get life back to normal after yeah. these storms, and not even two weeks later, they're going to see another one. It's just brutal to think about those people in Florida. Absolutely, and this was one that a few days ago, it was kind of like, okay, this could happen, this could happen, and then really quickly it kind of came together. So it doesn't look like a good situation, especially for po folks near Tampa. So let's show you what's going on with that storm right now. And you can see Milton uh, starting to develop, starting to develop that uh, symmetrical circulation. And unfortunately, all the models are coming together that says, yes, this will happen. So let's show you the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. So this actually strengthens the hurricane into a category four at one point. It may weaken back into a three. It may stay a four right now. Too much uncertainty to know that for sure. Either way, this will be a serious situation here across the western coast of Florida. Now, one thing that we're going to have to pay close attention to is Tampa because that obviously has huge population. It's very vulnerable to storm surge, and right now the storm track takes it just south of the Tampa area. Now, that's still bad, but it's not as bad if the track were to go further to the north. If it goes further to the north, then the strongest side of the hurricane to bring in a lot of that storm surge would pass right through Tampa. That's something we certainly do not want to see. And of course, this track is not set in stone. We could have some wiggle to this over the next few days as new information comes in. Another thing I wanted to show you is that, you know, sometimes during these hurricanes, people get a nice calm sunny day before the storm arrives to prepare. But notice on Tuesday, this is about a day before the storm is expected to strike. We already have rain out ahead of the storm, so rain will also be an issue and it's going to start falling before the storm even hits. We could have as much as a half a foot of rain across parts of Florida, maybe even more than that. So we'll continue to keep you updated on that situation. Back here locally, of course, the big headline has been the heat. It's been that way for a long, long time. 98 is your temperature right now, still in Phoenix, 71 in Payson, 65 in Winslow, Flagstaff sitting at 53. What we'd like to see happen is we'd love to see this big old ridge of high pressure break down, but it doesn't really do that completely. Now, by the end of the week, it weakens a little bit, but notice by uh, Friday into Saturday, this little dip in the jet stream starts to approach California. Now, this may nudge that ridge away enough to knock down those temperatures to around 102, 101. It's not great, it's still above normal, but at least it's better than this because this is not pretty by any means. 109, your forecast for tomorrow in Phoenix, 90 in Prescott, 108 in Lake Havasu City, 93 Sedona, and 80 in Flagstaff, 81 in Window Rock. So remember, tomorrow in the Valley is another first alert weather day because of that heat. Now up in the high country, it's cooler, but not that cool. Cottonwood, Close to 100 tomorrow, 97 on Tuesday, 96 on Wednesday. Pine Top, you're in the low 80, so that's warmer than normal, but definitely cooler than the valley. 82 on Tuesday and 80 on Wednesday. Seven-day forecast shows first alert days for both tomorrow and Tuesday because of the heat. And there is that cooling trend. What we really want to focus on is next weekend where maybe we can get those temperatures close to 100 degrees. And then once we do that, maybe you can finally start to see those highs going back into the 90s.